Hello, everyone. It's my pleasure to talk about our recent work here. And the title of my today's presentation is Symmetry of Solutions to Higher Order Conformal Equations on Hyperbolic Spaces. And this is a joint work with Professor Jun Gang Li and Professor Guo Zhen Lu. Okay, so I'm going to divide my talk into three parts. First, I will try to recall some motivations and history regarding the problems that we'll be looking at today. Next, I will give you some I will give you give you some explanation of the title. Particularly, I will give you a gentle introduction to the hyperbolic spaces and the higher order conformal operators. Next, I will move on to the main results and talk about the methods that were used throughout the proof. Okay, let's move on to the first one, the motivations. Actually, the one of the most important motivations came from the classic Hardy Little Wood Sopliff inequality, which concerns this kind of integral uh, with two functions f and g. And in 1983, Lieb showed the existence of a maximizing pair of functions f and g, giving the e equality in the in the one, right? Hardy Little Wood Sopliff inequality using the symmetric decreasing rearrangement. And this maximizing pair satisfies this. Uh, convolution type equation, right? x to the power minus lambda convoluted with f is equal to g to the power t minus 1 if we restrict f into a certain class of strictly decreasing symmetric functions. It is also obvious that if p is equal to t, then f must be equal to g. And these, in this case, the maximizing function f has an explicit form. f of x is equal to 1 plus x squared to the power n over p, okay? Now in this case, where f equal to g, let's make some change of notations. So now if we write lambda equals n minus alpha and u equals p, f equal to p minus one, we have the previous integral equation to be a similar one up to a constant multiplier, which says the equation three, u of x equals integral u of y to the power n plus alpha over n minus alpha, divided by x minus y to the power n minus alpha. And this is closely related to the following semi-linear partial differential equations, right? Which with this fractional order uh, Laplacian, right? this minus delta to the power alpha over two, u equals u to the power n plus alpha over n minus alpha. Okay. And by assuming the asymptotic behavior at infinity, Gidas and Nirenberg studied the solution of this semi-linear PDE when alpha equal to two, and they proved that the positive solutions are always radially symmetric, and therefore assume the following form for some constant C depending on the dimension alpha, and here alpha equal, alpha uh, uh, dimension N and alpha equal to two, for some T positive and X zero is a point in N, okay? Later, it took about a decade for Caffarelli and De uh, Giddas and Sprung to remove the growth condition and obtain the same results. Also, Giddas and Ni Ni Nirenberg studied the equation in the entire space Rn with two singularities located at the origin and infinity. Later, we and the Xu generalized the problem to the higher order equations on, on Rn and obtained the similar results concerning the explicit form of the solution, of the positive solution and the uniqueness. Okay, so next I'm going to talk about some uh, basic information about the hyperbolic space and higher order conformal operators. But before that, let me uh, just present you the primary problem that we're looking at. Basically, we're looking at this uh, two case order equation on the entire hyperbolic space with suitable general nonlinearity. The equation looks like this, pku equals f of u on hn. And I'll explain what a pk is uh, right away. Okay, so the hyperbolic space is basically a, a complete, simply connected remaining manifold with constant sectional curvature minus one. And it's one of the most important models of non-Euclidean spaces. And there are many equivalent models to describe the hyperbolic space. Here we have the half space model, which is given by Rn minus one times R positive 
equipped with this remaining metric, ds squared equals dx squared over x1 squared, right? Here, x1 is uh, uh, from x plus, x1 is positive. And by elementary remaining uh, differential geometry, can calculate the hyperbolic gradient, which is equal to x1 times the usual gradient. And you have the Laplace Beltrami operator, which is equal to x1 squared, Laplace n minus n minus one, n minus two times x1 times the euro partial derivative with respect to x1. Okay. Another very important model is the Poincaré ball model. And this is given by an open unit ball with the Poincaré matrix dx squared equals four times dx squared divided by one minus x squared squared. Similarly, you can compute the distance from an arbitrary point in this ball model to the origin, right? It's actually equal to log one plus x absolute value divided by one minus x value, uh, x absolute, absolute value. And if you would like to measure the distance between up two arbitrary points, you can use the Morpheus transform. Also, we have the hyperbolic gradient and the Laplace Beltrami operator right, in the following uh, formulas. Okay, so what is the PK operator? This is actually called the GGMS operator and has wide application in differential geometry and the conformal geometry. So for P equal to K equal to one, right? P one is known as the conformal Laplacian. It has played an important role in the resolution of a Yamabe problem. And when K equal to two, this is called the Pertense operator. For general K, when K is between one and strictly less than uh, over two, of course, they generalize the conformal Laplacian and the Pernays operator, and they only depend on the conformal structure of the manifold. Particularly, it has minus delta, minus Laplacian to the kth power being the leading term plus some lower order curvature terms. Usually it has a very complicated uh, expression, but fortunately on this simple hyperbolic space, it can be defined as the following. Right, pk equals p1 times p1 plus 1 times up to p1 plus uh, k times k minus 1, okay? And since it is called a conformal operator, we would like to know if it has a conformal invariance and in what sense. So generally, if we have a, a smooth remaining manifold of dimension n greater or equal to 2 with metric g, we say two matrices, g and g tilde, are conformally related if they are... Uh, differ by a positive function. Basically, you have g tilde equals e to the power two, uh, w times g. Right? W is a smooth function. And if an operator, right, with an operator a g is conformally covariant with by degree a and b, if under the conformal change of matrix, matrix right, a g satisfies the following equation. a g tilde phi equals a to the minus b w a g plug in a uh, e to the power a w phi for any phi uh, being a smooth function. Okay. Okay. So now we are almost ready to talk about the main results and the the, the proofs. Okay. So the first proof is re, uh, with respect to the the this equation, as we as I just mentioned, p k u equals f of u on the entire hyperbolic space. And here we assume f to be an ellipsis continuous, non-decreasing, and moreover, uh, we impose some regularity uh, for its derivative. And so now, if u is w k two local, it's a positive solution of the the equation p k u equals f of u. Then there exists a point p such that u is radially symmetric with respect to p. Moreover, u is not increasing uh, in the radial variable. Okay, so there are many methods that it has to be uh, has to be uh, have to be used uh, during the proof. The first one is the so-called Hexen Fourier transform, uh, which is basically the Fourier transform for symmetric spaces. And now, if we recall the Fourier transform in R n, right, which is given by this formula f hat equals this integral f times this uh, exponential function e to the minus R x c. 
here notice that this e2 rx cos c is a generalized eigenfunction of the Laplacian with the eigenvalue minus cos c squared. Similarly, we can consider the generalized eigenfunctions of the Laplace Beltrami operator, right, which looks like this. So formally, you can define the Fourier transform of a function on f on, on hn, right, particularly with this ball model, right, with uh, by f hat being equal to the integral on the uh, Poincaré ball f of x times this eigen uh, eigen function, okay, provided this integral exists. Moreover, there are many uh, parallel results regarding this Hexen Fourier analysis on hyperbolic space. For example, we have the inversion formula um, and the planetary formula. Okay? They, they both hold for for a transform on hyperbolic space. Okay, and another key method that uh, is used to prove the symmetry of solutions is this method of moving spheres. So let's first look at the Euclidean space case. Right, we have the inversion. Right? It's called I with respect to the sphere centered at A with radius lambda right, by, by this uh, transformation. Okay. It is actually a conformal diffeomorphism and maps spheres into spheres. Okay. More precisely, right, on, and also briefly, the, the moving sphere method compares the solution with its Kevin transform U, U lambda, and it has been used by Padilla Chen Li, Lian Zhu, and many others. And this uh, Kevin transform U lambda is uh, just going to be defined uh, in terms of the inversion with respect to the sphere. Okay, so now let's look at what do we do with it on hyperbolic spaces. So now on hyperbolic space, we have the matrix G uh, HN can be written as dr square plus sinh r square d theta square, right? For a chosen point x equals uh, r comma theta right, in geodesic polar coordinates with respect to a center p. So the inversion will take the form right, x lambda defined as phi lambda r comma theta. Right? You keep the theta and uh, strange the, the radius. Okay? And we write the new matrix under the inversion map as this g theta, right? so that it's going to be equal to d phi square plus sinh uh, phi square d theta square. And it has to be a conformal matrix to the original G. Okay? That being said, G tilde is equal to E to V G for some function V. Okay? And it amounts to considering the following ODE, right? Phi uh, of R prime equals minus sinh phi of R divided by sinh R with a boundary, uh, with an initial, with, with initial condition. And by solving this ODE, we can uh, actually get the definition of the Kevin transform on hyperbolic space, right? You lambda with respect to the center P of like the tra Kevin transform of this function is defined as U of X lambda, X lambda being the inversion times a Jacobian, right? Factor of Jac involves the Jacobian, okay? But to remember here, the one different, significant different, uh, significant difference here is that this Kevin transform is defined everywhere, but outside this small ball right, of radius R zero, which can be calculated explicitly. Okay, okay let's go back to this. Uh, um, since we're considering the GDMS operator, right? this actually was first discovered by Graham, Jenny, Mason, Sparling in 1992, and by Branson, Branson in 1995, that the GJMS operators, they are conformally covariant with this by degree n over two minus k and m over two plus k, so that if you have a, a conformal change, right, it must follow this transformation law, okay? So now we have another theorem regarding the, the symmetry of the solutions using the method of moving spheres. So here we still assume k is greater than one, but strictly less than a half of the dimension n. Can f is ellipsis continuous, uh, non-decreasing such that f of zero is zero, and f is somehow uh, sub uh, 
with uh, critical growth here f, 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 f of u prime is in L n over 2k local. Okay. So now if we have a weak solution, positive weak solution, but here we still need to, we also need to assume the solution has some decay condition at infinity. Then we would uh, get one of the following. So that solution of solution of the uh, solution u is either a constant or there exists a point p such that u is really, really symmetric with respect to that point. Okay, okay so after uh, talking about the moving sphere, I think it's also worth mentioning the moving plane method, which is somehow like a prototype of the moving sphere method. And this is initiated by, was initiated by Alexandrov and then developed by, by Serene in uh, 1970s. Later, it was used in Gita's Nirenberg paper to demonstrate the symmetry of positive solutions. And this technique is also extended to equation to the entire space and manifolds with certain uh, foliation structure. One big um, contribution is by Chen, Chen Li and O in 2006. They developed the integral equation version uh, of the moving plane argument, which is uh, the one that we were, uh, we were using for our problem, rather than, the, rather, than the, rather than the method for the differential equation. Of course, there are many other contributions by many uh, mathematicians. Okay, so now, uh, since the hyperbolic space is not a flat space, right? So in order to uh, conduct a method of moving planes, you have to consider the foliation structure of the, hyper of the hyperbolic space HN. But it is not that complicated. So as we mentioned, as I mentioned, there are many ways to, to look at the hyperbolic space. One of the ways is that, is that we can consider HN as a sub-manifold with one dimensional higher. Well, here G, the matrix is with the signature, the first component is, is minus and all others are positive. So the, we have the hyperboloid model to be the sub-manifold sub so that the inner product is equal to minus one. Okay. So it corresponds, co uh, this is corresponding, uh, this corresponds to the, the hyperboloid in R3. And with loss, without loss of generality, we may choose x1 direction and denote Rn comma one to be R11 times Rn minus one. And we can define the rotation uh, AT to be AT tilde times the identity on the n minus one dimension uh, 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 Euclidean space. Here, the RT tilde is simply the hyperbolic rotation. Right? It is almost the same. It's pretty similar to the rotation in uh, Euclidean rotation, but by replacing the cosine sine with Sinh and cosines, cos. Okay, so now if we let u be equal to h n intersecting with uh, x one equals zero and u t be a t of u, then we know h n is well is going to be foliated by u t, and u h n is the the infinite union of this u t, okay. and we can also define the reflection with respect to u t, which is gonna which is gonna be I t equals a t uh, composite i composite a minus t, right? So clearly and clearly, this u t is fixed by i t. Okay. So just un to understand, you have some uh, certain foliation structure and the symmetry uh, with respect to this space h n. Okay. So now I'm gonna sketch the proof. So first, as I mentioned, we have the Paxton Fourier transform. It basically was used to prove the differential equation pku equals f of u is equivalent to the integral equation. So we have the Green's function, right? u of x equals integral g x y uh, of f, f of y. Okay. okay, so this is the the first thing, and then uh, we know exactly some uh, precise estimates for this Green's function. Right? For example, g this Green's function g is positive, decreasing with is, respect to geodesic distance between x and y. Moreover, it has an upper bound, 
right? It's less or equal to one over gamma, it's a constant, times one over two times sin three over two to the power n minus two k. And this is due to the work by Lu and Yang in 2021. This is very important because for higher order equation, we have no maximum principle, okay? But this maximum principle is essential when you are applying the maximum, uh, the moving plan method for the second order equation, because you are gonna compare the, the solution U with its reflection, okay? Okay, then after knowing the Hexen Fourier transform, right, which shows the equivalence between the integral equation and differential equation and the, the precise estimate uh, for the Green's function, we are able to apply the moving plane method to the integral equation on hyperbolic space. So first of all, first of all, you need to have the foundation structure, and then you have to define the shift, the rotation, and reflection on HN. Right? It, they are slightly different than the the ones on RN, but uh, very similar. Lastly, we also have to use the highly little word Sobolev inequality and Green's function estimates on hyperbolic space to ensure the plane can actually be moved either from the infinity or from the boundary if we are considering the boundary value problem. Okay, I think that would be all that I would like to share today and thank you for your attention.